Welcome to the NFT podcast, Ratborn. So how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Francesco. I appreciate you having me uh, on this new podcast, this new venture that you're doing. And uh, yeah, I'm doing well. It's uh, it's about 12 p.m. here in New Orleans and uh, Great, ready, to, ready to rock. Great, man. So let's jump into NFTs world. What are NFTs for you? Why you're doing this stuff to you? Why NFTs? Well, I feel like the new internet is being built right now. Uh, I feel like the 2020s, this decade is really exciting. Um, you know, and it started with a uh, cryptocurrency and um, I, I look, I have just been learning as much as I can. And I'm just as new to the space as I think that you are and a lot of people are. But I guess what I've come to learn is the, the blockchain technology is uh, what is really revolutionary here. And it's being applied to all these different platforms. It started off with money. And now it's being moved to um, art and, and collect collectibles. And so it just feels it feels a lot different than um, I guess you know how how the internet has has behaved in the past. Um, yeah, and so I just started learning about non fungible tokens and how to tokenize your art and make it a, a you know something that's rare and and people can actually own even though it is a digital item. And so. I, you know, I've been making art for years, uh, and I, as just as I think a lot of artists have, have been, you know, they, we've learned about this new thing, and so we're, we're trying it out and uh, seeing what it all is. But I'm, I'm very much learning as I go. I mean, it's a whole new space, and it's, it's, been, a, it's been a very much like a community of people that I think, uh, it, which has been really cool. I've connected with a lot of uh, other artists, a lot of other collectors, just people that are interested in art. I think that there's like this newfound energy, uh, which is very exciting. And so I'm happy to like be a part of it and be here for it. Yeah, I mean, that's, basically, that's basically it, yeah. Great. And so, yeah, you know, you are like the first musician that's coming to his podcast so well, what why nfts and how are you like linking nfts in your music business well uh so far i have um basically i haven't done it in the scope of what in my head of what i'm gonna do so it's uh there's a there's definitely room to uh improve and uh make it more unique and everything but I would say I, I am primarily a musician I mean that's how I started out I would consider myself a musician before anything else and I think over the years just with social media being the way that it is I uh, you know Instagram obviously like uh, I was thinking of better ways to market my music and and so what I started doing a number of years ago was linking my music with other artists, uh, things that they had done via Instagram. So I, you know, go on, look at a hashtag, um, you know, digital hashtag digital art or something. I find an artist that I thought was really cool, had a cool aesthetic. And then I would uh, take their art and I would obviously get permission. And nine times out of 10, these artists would love, you know, jump at the chance to be tagged in, in a post and, you know, uh, share their work. So, um, it, it was all good. And, um, that was kind of like, you know, I was just trying to make my music more interesting to watch because obviously Instagram is a visual platform and I'm trying to sh show my music. So, you know, how do I do that in this new world and in this new space? So that's what I, I've been doing that for a number of years. And that got me interested in visual art. And so then I started learning about, well, I want to do my own visuals to my music. I want to make my own music videos. And so slowly but surely, I started, you know, creating my own visuals. And that led me to like digital art and 3D animation, which is a whole nother world of crazy possibilities. But um, to answer your question about NFTs, uh, basically, I'm at the point right now where I've come up with some uh, 3D animations, and then I'll just put my music 
uh, and, and when I say music, I just mean like uh, some interesting like beats that I've come up with because I do a lot of electronic music too. But um, the next thing I really want to do is start tokenizing my music so that because I write songs. And so what I want to do is um, tokenize my songs with uh, with music videos that are like legit full on music videos that go with the songs. Um, so I just got I just joined uh, Known Origin. And I don't know if you've heard of that. It's one of the platforms for NFTs. Yeah, and, it's like uh, the ex exclusive platform you need to be accepted for, right? That's right. Yes, I was so gratefully accepted. Um, and I, we can talk about that too, just like the how to go through the process of joining these platforms. Uh, I applied to so many and it was months ago and I wasn't even really expecting anything. And then all of a sudden I get a message on Instagram uh, from from their platform saying we we're reviewing your application. I was like, oh, great. And um, so, yeah, so I, I uh, you know, took a, a, a lot of time, but I was eventually accepted. And um, so now I'm basically at the point where I need to start a new collection uh, and I want to do something completely different than what I've done on other platforms. I want it to be new. And so that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm going to start um, basically taking the songs that I write and uh, putting them on the blockchain and, uh, you know, and, and coming up with interesting visuals. I guess it really hasn't changed all that much over the years. I guess it's just, it just feels different. I think with this, with the NFT space, you know, I feel like the, the, the concept of ownership, uh, you know, how things can be traded and just the, the blockchain tech, I think it all goes back to the blockchain technology and, you know, the virtues of that, that make this all happen. So, um, right. yeah, right. I don't know if I answered your question about the music uh, aspect of, you know, but I, I think I'm just very much still learning. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, do mate. It. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And it's interesting to, to know your process. So you're saying basically very important things you say. For, for nowadays, for an artist in music, for a musician, it's important also to develop like visuals because that, that can be like a, a combined business opportunity because you can show your music better and you can transform it into an NFTs. And so you're saying that you are using your music like all oh, like um, a tone of your of your visuals. And you're also saying that you want to create just music and then the NFTs music. So you are not like going to upload it never on Spotify. So what's she like your plan? You don't want to join the platforms that we already know like Spotify, iTunes because of the royalties or you think that it's still good to like have both so just join Spotify but in the in the meantime I can develop like my home business on the blockchain and like minting music and I would like also to know more about how do you mint music but okay we can talk about that. <laughs> well, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, well, what do you do? I feel like there's it's a weird transitionary period where, you know, there are still all these streaming platforms and there's this new space that's being discovered. I feel like this new Internet is being built right now as we speak and all the possibilities are being imagined. But um, I, I would say to answer your question, yeah, I, I'm, I would still have all my music, at least for now, on these streaming platforms i i subscribe to a website which it you know if any of your listeners are musicians or you know they don't know about this this website i would highly recommend it it's called distro kid and it okay. basically for 20 bucks for an entire year you can upload as much music as you want that you've written um and it will distribute it to all the major streaming platforms and it's just like one click you just upload your song or album or whatever it is and um it, it does it all for you and, and and it goes through you know like literally every, everything that's out, almost everything i would say everything of it that is of importance i would say but um but yeah i think what's more what's more interesting to me is like what's going to happen and i feel as though it's only a matter of time before the whole game changes and streaming it's i mean maybe streaming is no longer a thing i i don't know i mean it'll be interesting to see 
let's just say that. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. answer your question, kind of, you know, both in, in both camps right now. I have my music on Spotify and all those things, but I'm I want to discover what's going to happen with this NFT space. Um, did you see like there are specific platforms for musicians in the NFT space you know, instead of like so known origin open C do you think that there are already music music platforms specifics like for minting music or there are anyone any is that they are going to rise? I, in? I, probably. That's a that's a good point. I mean I'm sure that, that in the future there's gonna be specifically catered, you know. Uh, music, you know, a music platform on the blockchain specifically for music. There is something called Audius. I, I'm on it. I don't know much about it, but Audius, A-U-D-I-U-S. Is, okay. Uh, an app. I think it's I think it's a blockchain app where you can um, upload your music. And I've done that. And I, don't, I really don't understand how it works. I need to learn more about it. <laughs> but... Okay. Yeah, but it, but to answer your question, um, right now I think that there's just like I think of it as being just NFT platforms, and if you want to upload your music to it, you can. I mean, there you know what is an NFT? An NFT could be literally anything. I think anything, yeah. I heard like yeah, I heard like a couple of weeks like some soccer player sold part of her arm or something like as an NFT. I mean, it's just wild. Anything could be an NFT. No. Um, so definitely music. Um, I just haven't begun since it's so new. I haven't actually like I have a lot of music that I've shared on streaming platforms that I could basically just mint and then and put it up there. But I feel like I just want to do something new uh, and not get stuck with like reminting or just minting old songs and stuff. So I, I I'm very much inspired by the space and I want to create something that's like you know, true to it being new, you know, to me. So, um, but what I would suggest honestly is open C. I mean, that's where I've basically been minting and yeah. you can, you know, you, you can upload, you know, you can mint your music on anything, but open C you can, <clears throat> you can mint, uh, without an application, you know, anybody can go on there and it's just a one-time fee which is cool um, because there's other sites like Rarible that charge you every time that you want to mint something. And that is outrageous. Uh -huh. I mean, the, yeah. it, it gets so expensive. It's just not feasible. And um, so I would, if, if anybody's new to the space and wants to start minting, I would say go to open C and like, you'll pay maybe a one-time fee and I don't know, it might be like 20 bucks. I mean, it depends on Ethereum at that time and like how crowded the network space is or yeah. whatever so it, it could range but at least you're only paying that one time and then you can just go full force and mint as much as you want and um i think also what's that no no great i didn't know it about the fact that you just uh, have to pay once for open c yeah and, and and you could you know think about it like you could it could just be like a picture that picture could represent a song if you wanted. Like you could, uh, I think there's a, a 30 megabyte um, li like limit, like you can't go above 30 megabytes. But you know, an MP3 is what, like three megabytes? So yeah, yeah, you, could, yeah, yeah. you could put a whole album of MP3s if you wanted onto a picture, you know, just put it with a picture and then mint that. And then there's your album up there. Or what you could do is, um, you know, you could, you could uh, you could mint a picture that represents the song, and then you say, "Can you buy this NFT?" And maybe it's like some original artwork. Maybe it's the artwork for the song, and then you develop a, a connection with that collector, and then you can email them the song. Like that's the unlockable content that you can have with with uh, the token. But um, yeah, I mean, you can. Literally, just get a, just get started today if, if you were if you had the the ambition to. So um, yeah. yeah, 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 that's amazing. You can you can collect a lot more with the creator side. So like yesterday, a platform that allows create creators. It is not related to music, but it allows creators like to 
were um, no sorry creators uh, clients so who buys who, who buys the yeah. the the art to work on different layers of the same artwork you know when you create a, a project in Photoshop or in Premiere um, you can work on different layers of that and that means that this artwork always change because creators and buyers can interact at the same moment on it and it works it, it changes over time so do you think that like we can see maybe something in music like that so maybe that a, a user suggests to like a music creator hey i want to change this tone can i take like this uh, this soundtrack and change this and change that it's like uh, a new way of doing remixes because remix of course is a huge business inside the music business itself yeah absolutely i hadn't even thought of that of how you could do remixes and just the nature of you know, just change, yeah. you know, once you own an NFT, then it's yours. You can literally manipulate it if you, if you, if you wanted to, I don't know though. That's uh, I don't yeah, know how I would feel. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I'm not really that precious about my work, but I don't know how I would feel if like somebody bought my, bought my song and then was like, okay, I'm going to change the lyrics. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> change it. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, the, the platform that I was saying, it's called Async Art. I remember now the name. So I will link now in the description inside with all the other platforms that you said before. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so it seems like maybe one day we'll see like Spotify and clouds that to die or maybe they're go they need to like adjust their uh, business to this. Do you think that they are, what's your vision like here? Do you think that they are going to build something on that or do you think they are skeptic they are not joined never to they will never join the nft space and we just will see the arise of other platforms what's your suggestion think, here if you were if you were inside like spotify or soundcloud well i would say uh that's a great question i am not a business minded person i mean i feel like i'm just an artist or a creator and uh i i want to learn more about that kind of stuff. But if I was uh, someone who working for Spot, I don't know. I think I have my own views on it. I think blockchain is a disruptive technology. It's disrupting the status quo. It's it's uh, there's no going back. It's like Pandora's box has been opened. You, you're, you're not going to like set, you're not going to outlaw it. It's like countries can't outlaw Bitcoin. They're going to have to adapt to this. They're either going to have to make their own digital currency or, or you know, it, there's no going back. I don't think so. I, I, when you to hear you talk about that, my inclination is these platforms are going to have to adapt or die. And that's just how it's going to be. It's like, no. it's like when the internet first came along, you know, it's yeah, people yeah. thought Amazon was crazy for trying to sell books online, you know, and now, look what's happened. I think um, it's going to be something like that. Um, eventually, everyone is going to have to be on board with it. Uh, and again, I, it's not like I know I'm not a I'm not a I don't I'm not a computer person or you know, <laughs> kind of, I don't know. I just I, I know what I've been you know digesting on YouTube and stuff and just learning so much about this. Yeah. space that like okay i, I kind of see what the what because you know the, the, the one thing that you can count on is that change is going to happen you know there's it, it, always going to be something that changes and so uh yeah i think it's it's going to disrupt what's 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 happening um what's happening right now yeah and it seems to be like cyclical it seems to be generational it's like in the 90s people distributed music far differently than in the 2010s you know and now here we are in the 2020s and this is what we have and this is the new thing so um yeah it's it's interesting though it's <laughs> i'm still trying to like wrap my mind around all these things but uh yeah but, yeah, yeah good Did point I, 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 I so you say you said you 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 you're saying the nfts plays as a business not, not as a not in a business view so i don't want to annoy you anymore with business uh no, no, questions fine, but no. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't mean it to, in that regard. Like, I want to think of it as a business because I want to sustain myself as an artist, and that's my—that's yeah. ultimately my goal. I want to have 
time to make yeah, art. That's interesting. And the other day I was interviewing also here. I was I'm in this island and I'm like running a series of interviews to the artists on the island. And the one with mock success says, I said, hey, how do you mix like marketing, business uh, in heart? Because you are a great artist. And he says, he, uh, he answered me, art is a business, man. How, how, how do you think that I'm going to survive in this world without not transforming it? So it's great to be an artist. You need to like the, do your daily routine as an artist. I know that you need like isolation, meditation. Uh, maybe uh, you need to, 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 to find your bubble, your space, but or, or you've got like a manager. But it's great to say, okay, because selling is not so boring as you think when uh, also yeah. when you are an artist in something that uh, with selling, with creating events, with creating like an inter international network, a digital network, a virtual network, turn to NFTs. I'm sure that you come up with new new ideas because if you like, this artist was telling me, "Hey, I'm from me, I'm from Jersey, but uh, I went to New York, I went to uh, California, I went to Berlin and different places, and this helped me to develop new arts based on my the new audiences." I was coming up too. So it's, of course, interesting and 360 degrees. Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't uh, try to come across as being pretentious, like, oh, I don't think about those things because I'm an artist. Now, I, yeah. I definitely, uh, I need to be more well-versed in, in business. And that's why I think the NFT space is really exciting because I, I actually have the chance, and this is what's so great, is that it's, it's direct to the consumer, it's direct. It's like artist to collector. It's artist to consumer, and there's no, there's no middle. There's no central bank or central yeah. streaming platform to go through. You yeah. Know? yeah, and that's what's really cool. And then anytime that collector or that person wants to sell that music again, I collect royalties. It's like built in within the uh, the design, and. Um, so yeah, the the whole thing about like oh wow, I could actually make money off of my art. Wow, this is <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with streaming. It's like I I know artists that get like millions of streams on Spotify and they get like thirty cents. It's like outrageous. Like people, I mean, it's just it's not fair to the artist, but the way that it's yeah. set up right now. So something has to change. And um, yeah, I'm here for it. Front row, let's go. Yeah, man, man, that's revolutionary. Artists will rule the world. Really. <laughs> I, I can, I can see it now. It's very powerful. For uh, I see one, one, one of the best quotes I heard from Kenny West. He said, "Artists shape our culture." So think about who created the Statue of Liberty, like in New York. So when you think about New York, you think about that. Yeah. yeah then you, then you think about okay finance you think about uh, all the right. reason inside but artists shapes our culture so i think that that's a huge moment uh, yeah great okay so Absolutely. because we are talking like so uh, let, let's forget about your business side and talk about your artist side i found uh, one thing very interesting on your profile that i never said before it's data meshing can you please tell me more about that what's the style how you developed uh, everything you want oh, to tell us yeah sure uh data moshing is um an interesting glitch style art video art i guess you could call it i don't know much about the history of it and I, i'm trying to remember exactly where i first saw it i'm sure it was on instagram or somewhere but you, you basically, uh, there's different plugins and things and ways to do it, but let's see if I can explain this right. So, but you take two videos, you can put them side by side in, you know, Final Cut or something. And you basically have the frames from the first video and how they're being moved those now those frames from the first video now apply to the second video or maybe it's vice versa i'm not explain, explaining this very well <laughs> but no no but yeah it's, maybe really it's more easy to see it yeah yeah it, yeah exactly i uh but it, it creates this really trippy glitchy thing that i really just i don't know my eyes just like really like it and my brain goes Whoa. and uh <laughs> and it's it's been fun to like uh it, explore like just different ways to 
I don't know, manipulate videos, like even just like regular things, you know, you can like, it's almost like a little magic trick. But um, yeah, so I, I sometimes what I'll do is because I, you know, like I said, I'm a musician primarily, I will, you know, write a song and then maybe use data moshing as a way to yeah. make the song look more interesting or sound more interesting. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if I answered your question very well. No, 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 um, you answer, yeah, you answer, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I know that it's strange and difficult to explain because it's so creepy hard that you need to see it, so yeah, yeah. And there are some really great data moshers that are like way, that like really into it. There's this one account called Connection Interrupted, I think is what they're called. But do you use like a software for that? Yeah, yeah um, there, there's a so the there's this thing called a Vidamux or Avi a v, Avi D Mux. I don't know how you would say it. Okay, that's the first uh, program uh, that actually uh, makes data moshing. I think it's been around for a number of years. I tried to use it, but it doesn't work with like it's so old. It doesn't work with my new computer. I think so. I have to use a plugin, and I just input the parameters on the plugin and it um it, it can mosh it for me i think a vitamux is like a little bit more in depth and i've tried using it but it, it just like crashes my computer but uh yeah there's like there's like p frames and i frames in in every video and the way that they're like you can delete p frames and when you delete certain frames it just makes the video mosh i guess <laughs> So right. it's it's like one of those things that uh, it's like, okay, I know how to do that. Okay, cool. That's like one thing I know how to do. I can also glitch videos. I can, uh, you know, get into Blender and make 3D animations. What if I made a 3D animation and then data moshed it, you know, and, and then all of a sudden now we're in the real world, you know? So there's, I feel like it's being, just being creative and that's, it's That's so just the more things that you know how to do. You know, you you can combine them all and synthesize, and that's the fun part. So it is, it is. Um, so as Lal, like as a general artist, like both in music and in visual, like where do you take your inspiration? How how do you like decide to create this and your music? And if it in any way they are related both your visual skills and your musician skills i think i think they are that's a good question i go i think i go from one thing i mean i'm in this studio space that i've created i'm still uh getting more equipment and everything but i would say i go from one thing to the other and then just back and forth it's like i'll get bored if i just do music or if i'm working on one song like over and over you know it's just like just like with anything you get fatigued yeah. And it helps me to like then think about the visuals, you know, think about, okay, what is this song going to look like? Or maybe I'm working on something completely different, but it's a visual art thing. And, uh, and so then I'll do that for some time and I'll do that for a while and then I'll get tired of that and then I'll, I'll get inspired by the music again. So I just kind of ping pong back and forth between music, video, video, music, and they all influence each other. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to look for the ultimate culmination of everything, like all the things that I know, how do I put it all together and make it appealing and um, just interesting to me. Um, I do know I have something in my personality that says, you know, like if, I, if I'm not being musical after a certain part at a certain time, like I'll get depressed. <laughs> I'll, I, you know, I just feel like life's not as fun. So I, I think the the main thing is just being able to express myself and i think that the most important part for me is just expressing myself musically and um you know the art is kind of secondary like the visual stuff i feel like you know if i could hire a 3d artist if i had the resources if somebody anybody out there maybe i could do a plea like anybody out there that wants to work with me and like that's a digital artist or uh you know wants to uh, or any sort of visual art really um, I would love to collaborate uh, because I primarily see myself as a music musician. I feel like I'm very handicapped when it comes to visual art just because it's so new to me. But then again, it's kind of nice to not know how to do something and just do it. You know, it's like I don't have any limitations. I mean, I do, but 
it's just like not knowing what the rules are is kind of uh, kind of nice. Uh, whereas with music, it's like I know, I've trained classically. I know theory. And so that can be also sort of inhibiting too. When, if you think about it, if you know all the rules, sometimes it's, it's, that can be counter creative or. It know, is. It is. Yeah. Oh, so, so for, for all the visual artists that are listening, please, please uh, write to this man. He wants to work with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will link the like, contacts here in the description. Yeah, great. Man. <laughs> and so <laughs> we, um, we shall like your plans for this year, 2021. How do you, because it's great that you say I do different kind of arts to mix, uh, th that, that help me to mix and they, get me more creative and I personally this is what I do with my life I try to do so many things as possible also there are like they develop my analytical side and my creative side and then inside the creative side there are others like different creatives um, outputs and inputs that I try to to put in it. so more stuff I do more I feel like the they grow on each other and sometimes it's Absolutely. difficult because in like in January I was burning out because I was I wanted to do too many stuff and I say okay you know I need patience but now I can like feel the flow of it and, and when I mix all these parts of my uh, of my needs of my passions they really shape my life so now I know like the, in the morning it's the best time to do this stuff and the afternoon I know that's the best time to do this stuff so I'm more I'm more like multidisciplinary, but it's not it's not stressful like it was maybe one year before when I was work, working like 100 hours per week and need to mm. manage like different emails, different uh, um, different tools. Uh, now when I've got like both creative and analytical side, I can easily switch it. That's um, a great point. I, knowing how you feel. That's about the things. power. That's the power of Abit. Just yeah. That's the power of what? Uh, habits of developing like new habits and creating and shaping your habits. Right. And having a routine and knowing yourself well enough to know when something feels wrong or something feels right. And when you're in the mood to do this or to do that, that's very important and, and important to being efficient and being productive. And um, excuse me, I can definitely relate to everything that you just said. I just moved to this space. It's an art loft. It's for artists. I had to apply to get in and, uh, Great. you know, and it's like just having a nice space to be able to work and not feel stressed about, you know, having a job or, you know, you know, competing in the real world. Like I can just focus on the craft, which it is, it's a craft and you do it day in and day out. And, um, and, you know, artists need time to develop their art. You have to have time and resources. And I feel like there are many instances in my life where I felt like a little overextended, you know, and I, I wasn't in the headspace to, to do it. But I, I realized that creating that space to be okay with just being creative and, and not literally just working towards a result all the time. But, um, that's been really helpful. So I'm really excited. You asked me about this year and what my plans are. I, I would say um, right now I'm, I'm very much focused on, uh, you know, selling my, my artwork online via NFTs and um, coming up with I, I, my most immediate goal is to come up with a new collection. And, uh, and I think when I say collection, I think what I'm really trying to say is a new album, a new, a new, uh, album of songs that are going to be tokenized on the blockchain as nfts and i want to do that through known origin which is the platform that just accepted me um and uh i just want to uh you know just make really great art and uh and and keep keep going and um you know and the like has i'm i'm coming up to my mind a question because yeah. when you when you put like your music on Spotify, you don't decide in a sense uh, a price. So you just upload it on Spotify. You take a percentage royalties for your music. And what's like your your thoughts or your suggest about pricing your music on 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 non origin? 
You know, that's a good question. I think um, it's it's made a little bit difficult, and we haven't talked about the dark side of the blockchain <laughs> because the gas fees for doing anything on the blockchain are outrageous right now. Um, I, I was lucky enough to get a couple bids on one of the first NFTs that I put up there. And, you know, first of all, you have to put it up on the blockchain. That costs a fee. Uh, then what I learned is that even if somebody bids on it and, somebody, and, they, and the bid is accepted, just to send it to them costs money. So it's like, how much money are you really making off of an NFT? I don't think people, I mean, unless you're selling it for yeah. thousands of dollars, you know, then I think, so it's, it's, there's, there's this really strong incentive to like up the price because, well, people are paying outrageous amounts of money to, cause it's like internet play money. I guess people just think Ethereum isn't real. So let's just drop five <laughs> yeah. on this picture. Yeah. But, uh, so it's like, what is sustainable? Like, okay, on iTunes, maybe the song is a dollar, but it's like, there's no, there's no, you know, you're not having to pay like $40 just to send the song to somebody, you know? So I think, uh, put, I think what I'd like to do is put up a song and I, I want to see how, I haven't minted anything with known origin, but, uh, but yet, but, um, I want to see how much is it going to actually cost me to put it up on there? You know, that's a, yeah, that's a so it, it it definitely it doesn't make any sense to charge a dollar for a song when it costs 50 bucks just to put yeah. it on the block. Yeah. But if, if you're spending $50 and you're and there's like it's one of like 500 songs like, you know, because you can you can make the NFT a multiple. You can do it as a single, which is like a one of one. Or you could say this is one of a thousand. Here's this song, this NFT. So then yeah. now there's a thousand copies of it. Yeah. Um, so I think I would do something like that. Like maybe that maybe I mint a thousand of them, you know, this one song and charge. I don't know. Maybe it's. Yeah, I think I think yeah. In your case, maybe it's, yeah, it's better because if you just mint one, it's like okay, there will yeah. be just one listener of your song. You can <laughs> it can be like your best fan, but. But Maybe, yeah. there, there is something appealing to you know something being one of one it's the only thing you know it's the only nft like this you know and i think that can be have some appeal to collectors i know that personally because one of the people yeah. that bought my first nft was like that was one of the selling points was the fact that it was the only one but i think with songs i'm gonna do a different yeah, strategy different. maybe maybe you can like try okay one thousand song one thousand pieces of the song and just yeah. one visual and like the, the luckiest guy for a reason, you know, or maybe the, your you, you, your biggest fan is going to pay more to have like the song and the visual related to it. That's like, it can be like a strategy for it. If you want yeah. to be un unique and not unique at the same time. Right. And one, one person on Twitter, uh, which I thought I might, I might start doing is uh, he, he suggested, why not, um, you know, if somebody buys your NFT, they get a Zoom call with you. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's pretty good, you know, building yeah. a rapport. With, with yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like fantasy is the only limit here. You can you can use that NFT as a perk, as a special reward. You can gamificate the experience on it, and I'm going to talk about gamification in next podcast with get with like a special guest. Uh, just for spoiler, because gamification NFTs, I think it's like the next level, and um, yeah, and also Easter egg. You can talk, think about a lot of Easter eggs, so you can like embed a special perk inside the, that NFT that no one knows at the release, right. and then after one year, okay, because you bought this, huh? Is here is your here is your reward, and um, that's that, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really powerful for a community. And that's creative. People love. People start loving you for for this. Yes, yeah, the unlockable that's marketing. Yeah, content. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the beginning, of course, it costs you, but it's an investment, like for everything you do. You or you spend time or you spend money. That's the. In this case, you need to spend both at the beginning, and then right. yes, just yeah. great. Okay. 
make money, but um, yeah. there is yeah, supposed and... to be. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Yeah, no. I just maybe one thing about because yeah, we 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 went into the this price uh, um, yeah. topic. So like one maybe one way to better understand your price is define your target do you have like a specific target for your music or you're just okay no everyone is going to like my music uh i don't know um, if you've got like a specific target for your music like for age for interest for general yeah sure i mean i think i'm you know 18 to 35 year olds probably uh, <laughs> yeah. um I, you know i i think what here's one thing i wanted to say was when we're talking about like platforms and uploading nfts It's like I was in a in a chat on like Clubhouse and somebody told me this and it made made sense to me because we were talking about different platforms, like which ones to use. Like and this person was like, it really doesn't matter. Just upload somewhere because you're still the really important part is to market it on all the other sites, you know, like to to share it on Instagram, to go on Twitter, to like be a part of the discussion in the community. Yeah, that's gonna that's how you find your collectors you know yeah and that made sense to me so it you know it who what does it matter if you're clicking a link to OpenSea or if you're clicking a link to known origin i mean the thing as long as the thing exists and you're sharing it and you're making people aware of it yeah. then i think you're doing the work so um that is as far as like who you know who am i going for i just think i i i have released a lot of music over the years and i know people that you know have who have responded well to it and who've liked it and um you know i've kind of cultivated a following um because of that and so i i think i think it's just good music is going to find its way and uh and I'm, i'm That's what I'm trying to do. And I, and I, I think me, me just, you know, uh, you know, sharing a song on Instagram and, and yeah. you know, that's going to reach like way more people than, um, than it, maybe some other ways. So I think, I think, uh, I think that's what I'm trying to do is, you know, it's not like I think, oh, this demographic is going to, I mean, I'm sure that there are those. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I should. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, I think good, good music will find its way right. and, uh, have, a, have a lot of people that I think will, will enjoy it and we'll see, we'll see. It's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Let's just focus, you focus on quality, then people will come if they are like my viewers. I focus on quality. I keep on creating, and this is great also for the NFT space because I've seen a lot of, uh, how's, how their guests were saying me the other day. They see like artists switching and modifying their music uh, in the needs of the um, of the customers because now it seems like there is uh, a similar genre in this NFT space. So, for example, like February, March, we see a lot of pixel art, but don't change it. Just okay. keep keep doing your stuff, keep keeping keep the quality. Yeah, you see a lot of trends happening. You see a yeah. lot of like people. Or, trends yeah. yeah you're just threat it's okay if you if you're if you see on a business perspective you can do a lot of money but you need to be in the great in the best time yeah. in the best moment with the best output that you can right create okay I'm, so i think it's one of those yeah. things where i'm trying to stay true yeah. to to what i'm trying to do and and not necessarily go with what's the trend at the moment but that's that can be that can be tough i mean you do want to know what's going on you want to know what is being influenced and but uh also staying true to yourself is is very important i think too um because i mean that's the, at the end of the day it's like that's what it's all about is like to is self-expression and just being authentic and if people like it great if some people don't like it that's fine too it's just like i need to get this out you know i need to like share this, this or i'll go crazy <laughs> Yeah, I so, agree, man. So, yeah, thank you for sharing this last advice. And I really yeah. wish you all the best and good luck for your music and for your art. So thank you for being here. Thank you so, thank you so much, Francesco. I really appreciate you having me on.